So one of the most important things is to know how people are finding your site. And by that, I mean, what are they going to Google and typing into that search box? What are the keywords that they're using? So in this video, we're going to look at how to set up Google Search Console so that when you're looking at your analytics, you're able to tell what keywords and what queries those visitors have used and how they found you. So let's go into this video right now. So we're logged into our Google Analytics account. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up and link the Google Search Console to our Google Analytics account. Now, chances are, if you haven't done this already, you might not have actually looked into the Google Search Console. So we're going to be looking at both of those things in this specific video. So first of all, we're going to navigate to the acquisition area and we'll see that Search Console is one of the options there in the menu. And I'm going to go ahead and click on landing pages. If you click on any of the items within this and you haven't already set up the Search Console, you're going to get this screen right here. So this is telling us that this report requires the Search Console integration to be enabled. So let's go ahead and click Set up Search Console data sharing. Now what's going to happen is we're going to be taken to the property settings. And if we scroll down a little bit, we'll see that we've got the Search Console setting here. We're going to adjust the Search Console and we'll see that we don't have anything linked yet. So we see the word none. So I'm going to go ahead and click add. So we're going to go as far as we can with this specific account. And then I'm going to switch over to my actual account for the MeganVWalker.com website so that we can then actually see what happens once we've got some data that is synced. So it's asking me to verify that it's me. So uh, what this is going to do, so let's go ahead and we will put in our password. Okay, so now what we're seeing is the fact that we haven't actually verified any sites yet. Now, by verifying sites, we are saying that, yes, we own this. So if we didn't have this step, I could take somebody else's website and I could potentially go ahead and track their visitors or I could do stuff with it. So the fact that I need to verify it is basically knowing that I own it. So Google will allow me to do things with this website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add the site to the search console. Um, and it's basically going to redirect me. So that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now, it's giving me two options. I can either select a property type of domain. You can see that that's new. I don't know how new it is. I'm not sure how long it's been there. But that is, uh, if I choose that option, I need to have DNS access. Now, not everyone's going to have that. It's not as easy to necessarily get into the DNS settings. And also, not everybody knows um, or is comfortable with editing those on the actual domain itself. Luckily, this option works just fine. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to use this. So I'm going to put in the website address. And I'm just going to put in the URL and I'm going to go ahead and click continue. It's checking verification. So again, this is basically going to check to see, do I own it? Have I verified that I own that specific domain? Now, what we're going to see is a series of verification methods that we can use. So the first one is to download a file and then go ahead and upload the file into the root directory. So the easiest method that I've found is to go ahead and just use the HTML tag method. So what this does is it gives us a tag. And if you've already gone ahead and added the tag, either for Google Tag Manager or for Google Analytics, you should know or you should be able to pass on to your webmaster to be able to do this for you. But we basically are going to take that string and we're going to paste it into the head section of our website. Once you've done that, you go ahead and click verify. It will show if you've actually claimed and said that you own this specific website. So that's the first thing that you need to do is you need to go ahead and verify and claim your website. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my actual website so that we can then see what happens and how we actually are then going to be able to look at the data and what the purpose of that search console is. 
So now we're looking at the Google Analytics account for my actual website. So if we go back down to the acquisition area and we go to Search Console and we click on one of these reports, we're actually going to see some data is being pulled back. That's great. So OK, so let's just go back to the admin area where we were looking at the property settings where we originally actually set up the Search Console. If I look in property settings and then we scroll down there, we've got our adjust search console. So what will happen is once you've verified everything, you should then see your website actually linked. And then if you've got different views, you might see that it's been enabled and you can select which views to enable that for. So once you've gone through that process, then you'll be able to see the data within, sorry, within the acquisition area under Search Console. So let's look first of all and see how does this appear within the Search Console itself. So if I go back to that search.google.com and we're in the Search Console area, what we're going to see is a little bit about our website in terms of the performance. So some of this is going to be very similar to what you see in Google Analytics. There are additional things that you can do within the Google Search Console in terms of um, indexing your pages, that kind of thing. However, this is not what this series is about, but you can go ahead and Google or look at the help and it will give you more information as to how you might want to use this specific tool. What we're going to focus on is the searching that people do that end up bringing them to your website. So what we can see here is we've got total clicks, total impressions. This is looking at, um, let's just change that time frame and let's just look at the last seven days. Um, let's go ahead, change that. So we can see the total clicks, total impressions. We can also click to see average click through rate and average position. Now that we've done that, we can see those lines on the chart as well. So we can kind of see all of that information. If you hover your mouse over the question mark, we can see a definition of what that is. So total clicks, how many times a user click through to your site, uh, the total impressions, how many times a user saw the link to your site in search results. So think about someone going and actually typing out and then actually scrolling through the list of results that come back from that search, how many times was that actually displayed? Then we've got the average click through rate. So it's the percentage of the impressions that resulted in a click. So for the 69.5 thousand times that one of my blog posts or links would actually show up 1.92 thousand times that was clicked on. So that's the average click through rate. And then finally, the average position for the site. So in other words, where did it show in terms of the the number when you do your search? You've got the first res result, second result and so on. So what's the average? So the average is 22. But then what we can do is we can scroll down and we can look in this query section and we can see what the query was. We can see how many clicks, the impressions, the click through rate, rate and then the position. So when somebody Googles Forms versus Forms Pro, I'm 1.4. So I'm either going to show the first result or the second result. And out of that, almost 50 percent. So almost half of the people that did that search actually clicked on the link and went through to my website. So you'll see there's a lot of stuff there about Forms, Forms Pro and so on. And again, we can see the what the position was and where I ranked in terms of that that Google search uh, response. What am I actually being shown in terms of looking at those those links in the list? So this is what we're seeing in the Search Console. Now let's go back into Google Analytics and now let's look. We have the same section here. We've got a query section. And what we can do is let's go ahead and just change and put in the same time frame. So let's do the last seven days. And here we can see that we've got the Microsoft Forms versus Forms Pro. We've got Forms versus Forms Pro and so on. So we're able to see that same information. And this is helpful to be able to tell us how are people finding us online? So what is it that they're searching for? 
how many times are we actually showing up for that search term within a specific time frame? So it's a really valuable area within Google Analytics to set up. Just make sure that you go ahead and set up the Search Console so that you can link your account. And again, like I said, Search Console is important for other things. Go ahead and, and have a search, uh, have a search for Search Console, have a look and see how you can actually use Google Search Console to your advantage and make sure that your website is set up correctly and that your pages are being indexed and crawled through by Google. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.